back. Yes, we are. We are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Barrett and Rob, Derek, uh, a little under weather today. Hopefully be back uh, tomorrow. If you missed any of the program, you can always go to jacobsports.com or Jacob Sports YouTube channel and check us out. That's the beauty, man. All my, all my buddies tell me, dude, I'm, I'm always locked in. If I have to go to work, I got to call. I got to do something, man. I just hop right back in the car and I punch you guys right back up and I go right to the spot that I missed. Uh, or if I'm working at them on the treadmill, whatever. So it's it's one of the fun things about our show that you're able to, to catch up on everything, man. Um, Absolutely. I mean, it's easy, man. Just go to go to YouTube and change everything up. Yep. Put us in there. Make it happen. Oh, get it done. Get it done. All right. So let's look at this thing, Barrett. So the Niners yesterday, hard fought game. You know, this this wasn't a, a you know like the Eagles where they just destroyed the Giants. This was a hard fought game, you know for sure, and they end up winning it. Look, they're they're a good team, man. They are a gutty team. They're a tough team. Um, they can hurt you in a lot of different ways. You know that much we know. Um, but you know they were able to come through. I thought Dallas missed some opportunities in that. They definitely game. did. Yeah, yeah. They definitely you know, did. And, and obviously the big turning points here are a couple of interceptions by Dak. Um, and the game ends up with a 63 passer rating on the day. They nullified Ezekiel Elliott, who's a shell of himself. He averaged 2.6 yards per carry. And also, let's not lose sight of Tony Pollard going out of the game, breaking his fibula, which, you know, sucks for him. He's a free agent. Absolutely. Um, was huge, huge in this game. I, I like their style of football. They play a physical style of football, just like the Eagles play a physical style of football. Um, this game, this game's rating is going to be off the chart, off the chain, you know, because because you got two physical teams that love to run the ball, two defenses. One likes to rush the pass. The other one has one guy that really rushed the pass really good. You got two of the best linebackers. They tried to equate them to uh, Navarro Bowman. And Pat um, Patrick Willis. Willis, yep. I, I I'm not gonna take it that far because those two were by far the best linebackers I'd ever watched film on that I I had ever seen. They were awesome. Yep. And um, I mean, both of those guys were unbelievable. They could do it all. They could they could cover the pass. They could run stop. Fred Warner is that dude. He can cover. I saw him covering wide receivers yesterday, and he can you know he he's a play stopper. But he's not either one of those guys. But he is really good. But I mean, I, I think we have a great equalizer. You know, in fact, we have a great equalizer to their whole defensive scheme, and that's the offensive line. Mm -hmm. I mean, every guy on that offensive line that's playing got some accolades. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, either Pro Bowl, All Pro, Alternate, or something. We have by far the best offensive line in the past probably ten years. And this one is one of the best, if not the best, offensive line that we've ever had, that we've ever assembled. Mm -hmm. So that's the great equalizer and all that stuff they're talking about. You know, yes, they had Javon Kinlaw. He's pretty good. Uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, Ebercom. He's 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 um, he's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Nick Bosa is a terror. Yeah, he's and amazing. Armstead is good. But we're talking about good. Bosa's great. But we're great across the board. We're great at the tackle position, great at the center position, great at the left guard position. And it's not just me saying that, but the Pro Bowl voters are, are, are saying that also. Mm -hmm. So, yes, these guys are good. But, I mean, player for player, we have better players um, in, in strength positions, just like, you know, they they have a great player in, in Nick Bosa. Bosa is gonna give some guys, you know, he's gonna give some guys some headaches. But we can play around that. We can definitely play around that. We can we can game plan that and strength for strength. He's not gonna beat us like he beat the tackles from uh, from Dallas. Like like he went over that rookie, he was he was giving that rookie the blues. He mm -hmm. won't be able to do Jordan Malata like that. Nick Bosa would never, he won't be able to do um he won't be able to do my lot like that. We know he's not gonna do uh uh, uh, Kelsey, I mean, uh, Lane Johnson, like that. Oh, we know it's not gonna happen. Yeah. So, you know, when you talk about matchups, our Kelsey against their Warren, Warner, to me, that's the matchup right there. Mm -hmm. We'll block everybody else, but Kelsey on Fred Warner and his ability to block, 
we'll be all right. Because those guys up front, like Javon Kinlaw and um, Eric Armstead, mm-hmm. they do a great job of holding too, man. Yeah, they do. They better make sure that they uh, the Eagles better be right now. I mean, just just crying out loud about how they were getting held. How the defensive I was, defensive line were holding the. There was line. a lot of that. Yeah, there was a lot of those guys reacting and, that way. Yeah, that's why those guys are on at, at the tail end look so good. That's why they're running scot free all the time because their defensive line is holding. I'd be up there. I'd be screaming to the mountaintop. Look, they can't hold like this. Why do they keep? Why you keep allowing them to hold like that? Mm-hmm. I'm not making any excuses. You just make them aware of, of who's doing it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because, I mean, that second play of the game where, where you see um, you see uh, Fred Warner just go through untouched, that's because the linebacker was supposed to uh, – the offensive line was supposed to be blocking that linebacker, was held. He was – he was he spun him around. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love our chances. You know what I'm saying? I, I Listen, I hear you. I hear you. Um, and, and that's – they de- they definitely and they have the Hofunga who's your guy who you've been talking about all year is, is nasty back then and back beast. then he is, he is nasty that's for sure beast let's go to what they the problems they present on the other side of the ball um you know they actually Dallas did a, did a good job I thought keeping McCaffrey in check he had some big catches late to kind of move the move the uh, chains but he didn't run it particularly well and he, he was dealing with a calf too you could see he was over there working on that calf constantly but yep 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 uh, you know you got to deal with McCaffrey. You got to deal with Kittle, who you feel like it's only a matter of time. I will say this: they did a pretty good job on Debo too. Debo yep. didn't get loose, um, no. and and you got Ayuk too. So it, they got they got their fair share of weapons on that side of the ball too. And and you know you can't you can't uh, you can't forget about um, Mitchell too. Uh, yeah, Elijah Mitchell's a real nice running back who, who doesn't get any any acclaim at all. He's a nice player. Um, he's a great player, actually. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you when you about Elijah Mitchell comes in on first, second, first or second down, and then you bring in Christian McCaffrey since he's kind of hobbled a little bit, and he plays on third down. So I like that mix. I definitely like that mix. Mm-hmm. Those guys run well in between the tackles, and you know, you got to you got to stop Christian McCaffrey before he gets started. Yeah, Mitchell's just taking it downhill. He's a tough, hard nosed runner. He's very explosive going up the middle. I think we can take advantage of that right side of the offensive line. You got a you got a um, rookie right guard in, in Buford, mm-hmm. and then you have uh, my guy Mugichi 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 at, 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 at right tackle. Mm-hmm. That's where that's where all the heat's going to be coming from. Yeah, that's why we must get up on them early. If we can get up on them early, it could be a long day mm-hmm. for for Brock Purdy, and I, and I and I think we will be able to we'll be able to score on that defense. Can that offense counter that? You know what I'm saying? Like they 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 haven't gone against our our the likes of our DBs before. Yes, they had like they play against the Chargers and they got a great safety cornerback. They have one cornerback that's pretty good, but mm-hmm. you know all things being equal. We got the best secondary, well, the best cornerbacks in the league. Yeah, you no, know, right now. Yeah, yeah, no question. Yeah, and and really, that's the million dollar question. Like we we keep waiting for Purdy to get overwhelmed, to look like the moment's too big for him, to start making massive mistakes. I, to his credit, he doesn't turn the ball over. He is very clean with the football. Um, I also thought there were some moments on on last night where he there could have been some things taken advantage of, and he didn't because he was under a little bit of duress. Now, some of that is that's any quarterback, but will a loud atmosphere on the road get to this guy? That you know that that's the the million dollar question that we just don't know. It's impossible to know. Right, and, right. And, I'll, and the, it, let me say this too, Barrett. They're you know Shanahan's a really good coach, and, and D'Amico Ryan's on the on the other side of the ball is a phenomenal coordinator. I think he's going to be. I think he's going to be a head coach before they're all said and done this season. I mean, he's going to be coaching somewhere next year. It's not going to be with the Niners. He'll be a head coach. There's no question he'll be the head coach. He'll be a head coach, and um, I can definitely see. I can definitely see you know him being somewhere like probably. You think he'll I mean? You think he'll Texans? Outplay? Maybe. I don't think this, I don't think he'll take the Texans. I think he might take like Carolina. Carolina? Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, the Texans is just I, – I mean, I think they're scaring everybody away from the Texans. Well, the only thing that, that – that, look, I, I, I think they're people are so in love with offensive coaches, I think they're making a mistake. If you bring in a guy like D'Amico Ryans, he's a leader. He's going to get your defense in the right way. All you need to do is bring in the right offensive coordinator, and you're going to be fine. I, I just think their so, owners are so in love with offense that I, I hope that doesn't – you know, it doesn't hurt the guy. Um, and, of course, he was a really good player here for the Eagles, and he was a class act. I, you know, I, I like the guy a lot. I would see him lose this week, but I really like the guy a lot. Right, right, um, right. I think he ends up I, – I think someone's going to – someone would be really – would really make a mistake not to grab this guy. I will tell well, you Well, I, mean, I, I, I don't see any places right now besides somewhere like um, maybe Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you bring in a new coach, a, a young coach like that? To, or you to, just keep Steve Wilkes? Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing. I mean, Wilkes did a hell of a job. A hell of a job considering the fact everything that's going on. Right. The, I mean, the Texans, man, I I think he'd be a waste of his career to go there, you know? Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, I just I, – the only thing I, – I, I said this – I think we talked about this last week when it came to Byron Leftwich. I would just worry a little bit about turning down jobs because you don't always that opportunity doesn't always come around. Like say next year, say he stays in San Francisco and they have all kinds of injuries and the defense doesn't look as good. Then all of a sudden it's like, does he still get a chance? Right. So it's a, I get what you're saying too. You don't want to be stepping into somewhere where you're destined to fail either. You know, you're doomed. And I, I wouldn't want to work for that Texans owner. I can tell you that much. Uh, you know. What about the Cardinals? He's Within another bad division. owner. But yeah. Within I mean, the division, you better hope you can get Kyler Murray straightened out. If, if you feel like you can, then it's worth it's definitely worth that gamble there. I think. Right. Um, but that'll be interesting anyway. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to look at here. So the 49ers, uh, amazing, amazing what they've done. They've won 12 straight. Their last loss was October 23rd. They're um, pretty seven and zero as a starter. Mm-hmm. 49ers have made 17 NFC championship game appearances. They're seven and ten. I was a little bit surprised by that. I thought they'd have a better record than that. Uh they're two and five on the road in NFC title games. So uh that bodes well for the Eagles. Eagles are three and four overall in NFC championship games. Of course, they won the last time they played an NFC championship game back in the 17 season, uh, when they went on to beat the Vikings to go to the Super Bowl. That game we're talking about, the 38 to 7 game. So that's kind of where things are if you're just looking at, you know, matchups and numbers. And, you know, I'll go back to what I was saying earlier. If you get Jalen Hurts playing the way that he was playing and the Eagles are committed to the run and don't fall in love with the pass necessarily, yeah, this is going to be a challenge with this defense that the Niners bring. But I still think that the Eagles will be able to score on them. I, I truly believe that. It, they're not going to go crazy, but they'll score on them. I, I man, I, with their big, their big play capabilities, man, I, I believe that they'll be able to – get up on them pretty good because i mean the ward the the ward guys you know jimmy ward and uh uh what's his name uh uh traverius ward yeah yeah traverius ward they're okay they're just okay yeah their their corners aren't great no they're not they're not great at all lenore's not great at all either yeah so i mean i like our chances versus you know versus you know the past with those guys. Yeah, Charvarius Ward is the other guy. Charvarius, that's his name, Charvarius Ward. Yep. Uh, Hufanga's a beast, though. Yeah, and Tayshawn Gibson and Jimmy Ward are their safeties. I mean, their, their safeties are pretty strong. Yeah. But I, I I really like our chance again. And then I believe we can run the ball on them. We can run the ball against anybody. So I believe we can run the ball against them. So, I mean, I think we'll have a more consistent offense than anybody else has had on them. We'll be able to score on them like nobody else has had been able to score on them. It'll be it'll be a clash of the, of the Titans, you know, the two best teams uh, defensively in the league. You know, this is one and two, and it really depends on what category you're talking about. One and two. Overall, they got them. Overall, they lead the uh, Eagles by 15 yards as far as being the best uh, defense. 15 yards separates the two of them. Wow. <laughs> all right. So people are acting like people are acting like all oh, their defense is all this and all that. Well, damn it! Why don't everybody think of our defense the same way? We got seventy sacks, bro. Yeah, led the NFL in sacks this year. Why are we not getting the same respect and Jeff that they are? I mean, that we we get we we feast on quarterbacks. 
you know, if you can hold, if you can hold, um, if you can hold Nick Bosa, you're not likely to, you know, have any problem throwing the ball against them. Mm-hmm. It just so happens that you got a linebacker that could probably cover. He's probably the only guy that can cover Dallas Goddard. He could probably cover Dallas Goddard. Right. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. everywhere else, he'll get lit up. Lit up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's really what it comes down to. It was um, – I think you got the two best teams, you know. I think you got the two best teams still standing. And I think you actually have it in both leagues. Yep. 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 You know, it, it really played out where the heavyweights are, are going against each other here. This is not – you know, last year, I don't think many of us expected the Rams to do what they did and, you know, kind of come out of nowhere. And you felt like last year the Bengals were kind of coming out of nowhere. That's not the case anymore. Like right. the Bengals are, are, you know, the big boys, and we know what the Chiefs are, and we know, you know, what the Eagles have been all season. So they're not a surprise. You know, Barrett, getting that, just getting to the playoffs last year, even though they got they got beat up pretty good in, in Tampa, it's such a big step. You know, I, I just think they get a little taste of what it lo- what it what it feels like and how much higher a level it is once you get to this time of year. I, I really helped this Eagles team. I truly yep. believe that. Yep. I I, I like it, man. I, I like our chances, man, because I, I can hear all the pundits now. Oh, you know, uh, their defense, you know, is going to stop Jalen Hurts, and you know, saying we're going to go through all this, and I'm going to get pissed off again because you know they're going to be, you know. Uh, they don't have a shot of playing against this defense. They won't be able to score consistently. Jalen Hurst won't be able to run his read option because Nick Bosa will be there doing this and doing that. I, I can see it already. I already I already see the narrative that they're trying to paint. Yeah. And then, you know, and I haven't looked at it yet. You know, the game, they just, you know, they just we just figured out who we're gonna play. Now all the national pun is gonna be all on the 49ers jock, and it's gonna piss me off even more, bro. Let, let me ask you something. Um some people seem to be really upset about Nick Sirianni's like histrionics on the sideline where he's kind of going crazy up and down. And I know what the bleep I'm doing and all that kind of stuff. Right, right. So people are viewing that as, you know, it's like Harry high school stuff. Right. And, and, and he's, you gotta be professional and all the, you know, this and that. Right. Like, I think what you see there with him, first of all, it's genuine. I don't think it's a put on for the cameras. And I think it's what, one of the big reasons, not the only, but it's one of the big reasons why his players love him is he is emotional. He, he does wear his heart on his sleeve. He's not trying to be somebody he right. isn't. And I think that's what makes him who he is I, and, and makes him a good coach. I really believe that. Right, right, right. He, he He's the new wave coach. He's the coach that everybody um, that everybody's looking for now. You know, I mean, more vibrant coach, you know, I mean – it was uh, the Rams coach. What was his name? Um, Sean McVay. Of uh, McVay, it was McVay and Shanahan. Now you got to add Sirianni to that equation. Um, he is who he is, man. I mean he 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 likes to he likes he likes semantics, man. You know he likes that type of thing. You know he also likes to you know make sure that you know you understand he's a player's coach. He's gonna wear something that you know. It, one of his players um, is endorsing or, or has, you know, he's going to wear a clothing line his players have. He, he's going to do all that stuff, man, because he understands what his guys expect from him. And he wants to let them know, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm right here with you guys. You know, you know, this, let's just keep it rocking and rolling. So, you know, you're going to get, you're going to get that type of, you're going to get that type of uh, fun fair from him. You know yeah. what I mean? And, but you also gonna get, he's also going to cuss you out. He also yeah, there's accountability. He's yeah. not just rah rah kissing your your rear end guy. Exactly. He's get in on you. Yeah, well, he 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 gets pissed off. Once he gets pissed off, you see how he be cussing those guys out. Yeah, he's not afraid to get on it, man. And and that's the thing. I I think he keeps it real with them, and they know that. And there is going to be accountability for your actions. And you and have to. You know, I, I just think <laughs> that they've been like the whole season when we were sort of waiting for a a, a letdown from them. He didn't really see it. You know, I, I mean, it, it seems like he's got them prepared and ready to go. He also hired a really good staff. That's, you know? that's probably the most underrated thing, yeah. his staff that he picked. Yes, you have um, yes, you have guys that are carryover. You know, you, you got Stoutland. some of those guys. Yeah. yeah. But but I, I think he hit it on the head with the coaching staff he brought in, with the exception of I'm, I'm still not bought and sold on, on Mike, Michael Clay. 
I'm still not yeah, special teams. Yeah, I, th- that could be the one spot you might see a change. Although I will, I will give them this at least. They've been better. They definitely been better from what they were. Now, how much better? Mm, better. Well, I mean, I'm not holding my breath when we catch punts. He's shown the ability to catch punts. I don't worry about him fumble or anything else. And True. Knock on wood. Uh, yeah, Co- Covey secures the ball. I, yeah. Whatever. I mean, there's not th- much of a threat there, but he secures the ball at least. He definitely does that. He definitely does that. So, and I can deal with that. I can yeah. live with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Just don't turn it over at this point. We're at a point in the season now where I don't I'm, – I'm, like, I'm with you. I don't expect any kind of big returns. Just let the offense – Take it over where you where you fair catch. It. That's all I want. And, and, and trying to get yourself killed, like like it felt like every single time you caught the ball earlier in the year, um, you, bro. The, how how blessed are we now to not have Jalen Rigger back there? Well, I you know what I think Minnesota saw up close and personal just what that is. You know, uh, he's not long for the league. Well, he's not, he's not gonna be around long. They brought him in. He may not see a second contract. Right, they brought him in, and what has he done? I mean, what he doesn't even have over 100 yards, right? No, he had, he had a terrible, and his he fumbled four or five punts. Now, some of them they recovered, but he, he he gave it up like four or five different times, and that was his primary job. He wasn't really even used as a receiver. Wow, you know that's the thing. He he was he was barely used. Uh, like his numbers, I'm pulling them up right now as we speak. So he ended up. Uh, what did he do? Uh, they're terrible. I'm having a problem with my computer right now. <laughs> this is just terrible. Hold on. Let me hold look on. it up real fast. Let me see. I got it. I got it. Uh, of course, it freezes up just that second. So, all right, Jalen Rager, I got it. So, 13, uh, eight receptions, 104 yards, and a touchdown. Four fumbles, uh, returning punts. Oh, that wasn't a game? No, no, that wasn't a game. <laughs> it wasn't a game. Yeah, so I, I we'll see. I will see what ends up happening there. They obviously need to upgrade their punt. Re- the Eagles do their punt return. Um, and and I don't. I I don't mind Boston Scott returning kicks. Actually, I'm. I'm I don't either. I'm fine. I, I, don't, I don't dislike that at all. Yeah. Wow, you're right, man. He had 104 yards. You know, he played his entire season. He had one touchdown. I know. He only had five first downs. Yeah, and he just – do you remember in their comeback game, uh, that, that not the not the crazy comeback game during the regular season? Uh, yeah, yeah was, he had a great punt return. It was against the Colts. Yeah, he had a great punt return, but he had a play later where he stops on a route and mm-hmm. literally had he kept running, it would have been a catch. He stops on the route, and, it, and it's an interception. Yep. And, and Kirk Cousins is like – Dude, like, this is high school stuff. You know what are you doing? Stop! And even the announcers were like, "I, I don't even know what to tell you." With this, right, so, right, right. Anyway. Well, I, bro, how about the announcers this weekend? Romo, what the hell was that? Romo's unlistenable. I, I got to tell you, man. I know people thought it was cute. What happened? Calling out the plays and all that. I, I think he's terrible. He's he's diarrhea of the mouth. He never stops. He never stops talking. Bro, he said, "Oh, this." He said, "This is a perfect path." Besides being wide right, I'm like, what? yeah, by by sheer definition, that means it's not a perfect pass. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I at some at sometimes I got to wonder if Nance is like, if we, if we had a camera on Nance, he would just be like, "Are you serious, man? Did you just say that?" Oh my he's god, like, he, he needs he, he was trying to call uh, he was kind of call him a Superman or something. I'm like, what game yeah. are you watching? I mean, uh, they're getting their ass beat right now, and you're acting like he's playing. I if if you'd have just listened to the broadcast. You would have thought that the the Bills were were killing him. No, you're right. He kept he kept up. Like Josh Allen has not been at his best really this whole year, but especially lately. Right. Don't give me the Superman stuff now. If you right, want to go right. Superman, it was the other guy. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. He's got he's got it. He loves Josh Allen. He loves him some Josh Allen. I loves can tell you that. Him. Loves uh, him for sure. All right, we're going to come back. Speaking of that, we're going to dig into the AFC games. Uh, we're going to look at the Chiefs Jags. From Saturday, but we're going to start with the Bengals and the Bills from yesterday as Cincinnati advances to take on the Chiefs. And the big question is, what level of injury does Patrick Mahomes have? That is a big one, man. So we'll dive into that as well. Barrett Brooks, Rob Ellis, we are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. I'm going to tell you right now about Razor technology because the future of work is not remote or in person. It's a hybrid model. In facing this new reality, 
businesses must reimagine their workplaces to align with the preferences and needs of modern employees. Razor technology helps businesses create a workplace that gives their teams flexibility in choosing how and where they put in their hours. Online platforms for communication and collaboration combined with secure and adaptable mobile devices are enabling hybrid meeting experiences that are nearly on par with in-person events. So everyone can feel like they're a part of the conversation. Employees with strong social connections and their team report better well-being, higher productivity, and stronger retention rates. Razor technology helps growing organizations adapt to hybrid environments with industry-leading digital tools and insightful guidance that promotes efficiency and workplace satisfaction. Learn more by calling 866-797-3282, 866-797-3282, or visit them online at razor-tech.com. That's razor-tech.com. 